We've got about uh, two weeks left in January in terms of trading weeks, and we're just going to go over where we see the market going and uh, take a review of the trades it took, why I took them, and see what happened. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it, and let me know in the comments down below what you trade. Do you trade uh, S&P 500, NASDAQ? Are you more a Forex trader, options trading? Let me know in the comments down below, and uh, I can make more videos tailored towards whatever it is that you guys are actually trading more. But we're going to dive into it. So like we said in the last video, we had a bullish bias. Uh, we still have the bull bias. We are continuing to push up on the daily. So this is ES1. This is just the futures. So uh, S&P 500 is SPX. That's when uh, you're trading through the regular market hours. And we have ES, which is futures. Um, basically, every one point that this moves, if you use our one regular futures contract, then it moves $50. So as an example, if we went long and you captured these uh, 15 points right here with one futures contract, then you'd actually be making $750. Typically on brokers like Interactive Brokers, if you have one futures contract, it requires about $20,000 in the account. And every 10 points that you capture, whether on the long side or the short side, you will gain $500. Let's take a look at the chart anyways. So this is uh, Friday and Thursday. And we had pretty much bullish action after we got rejected on the Monday, uh, January 9th, when we had a huge spike, got rejected, pushed up, made new highs, came into the 50% retracement. Um, looks like we're going to still target the 61.8. And me personally, I was expecting that. So I was just expecting we would come up to about 618, 40, 50 area, uh, possibly get rejected and then come down and make new lows, new recent lows uh, below the 3,800 level. That's kind of my thought process, but I'm not going to trade that unless I see the opportunity actually play out where we get a clear rejection and a clear market shift down after um, coming up to at least a 618 area. Since I still had the bull bias um, on the daily, I was main, I was able to capture some longs. So we're just going to look over on uh, Friday. Basically, Friday, uh, this was an awesome trade for me. Since I still had the bull bias and we didn't get to the 618, in the morning, we had bad bank earnings, and that's what caused the market to sell off. Tesla had uh, news overnight that they were cutting uh, their cars, so sold off. Everything just kind of dragged down the S&P 500. So we had the sell-off in the pre-market. And once I saw that we had a confirmation of 30-minute close, yeah, right here. So basically, we were here was 9 a.m., and I take most of my trades anywhere from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. Once we had this bar right here, uh, the close at 10 a.m., I got in on a pullback targeting the resistance to the left. So I just personally found uh, one of my strategies is if we have a clean sell off to the left where there's not a lot of chopping consolidation and we have a 30 minute strong high volume bull market structure shift higher um, on a 30 minute, then I like to get in on a pullback with the target being resistance to the left if my daily bias is bullish, which it was. So this one was, a, it was my easiest trade of the year so far. So I'll just show you basically, I uh, got in at uh, 39.77 and then the target was uh, just below the wick. So my target was right at 4,000 and then my stop loss was below the current candle when it closed. So we had about a two to one R here. We managed to actually take 24 points on this trade. Obviously it went higher than I expected. I personally didn't expect that we would actually go fully red to green on the day. I thought we may get rejected and then come down and take out these lows and sweep the lows down here. So that's why I had this rectangle down low because I thought, hey, we could come up, come all the way up to resistance to the left and then possibly sweep the lows next before making a new high. That part was incorrect, but I didn't trade it. I took my one trade, went exactly to plan and I kind of called it a day, went to the gym and just watched from my phone, but um, no other trades other than that. So that was Friday. Thursday, one of my trades was a loss. I was about 11 a.m. and I actually sized up twice my usual size. So the reason why I did that is because in February, I'm looking to increase my size, but uh, I have, I've had good consistency. So I sized up twice my normal size and on this trade. And the reason was because I had the daily bull bias. Problem was I was getting, I was trading in chop. So we were clearly chopping to the left, but I had my daily bull bias. So once we came down, uh, I saw we formed support and we pushed up and then we pulled back, created support again, and we had this long green wick here to the left. Now typically when you have a next candle close green within the wick, if you have a bull bias, then the next candle actually pushes up and fills the wick to the left. If it's a green candle close and you're using something like a 15, 30 minute or one hour, 
not so much on on the lower time frames but on, on higher time frames if there is a wick and it goes with your bull bull bias and you have that close in the next candle that and there's hot and there's volume as well it tends to push up and fill the wick so i had a one-to-one -one set and i got stopped out so luckily you know it's still it was only my only five points that's also why i sized up because i was very confident i was very very confident in this trade but it didn't work out so cut the loss there and then i took another loss thursday before that at about 9 30 a.m had the bull bias and basically we spiked up got rejected came down made support and then came up problem i had here was we already swept liquidity to the high and i personally thought since i thought we would trade up to the 618 over on the overall daily and weekly time frame i thought we would trade all the way up there and make new highs but uh, we already swept liquidity and it was just a choppy trading day so when we had this this candle close in the 15 minute that was green i thought that was my signal okay perfect let me get in here risk the low of the current candle and target new highs we got stopped out here minus 13 points so that was thursday two trades both losses uh friday was a huge winner and then i had one more trade on tuesday Tuesday, we took the long at uh, around 11.30. And reason for this one was because uh, came to the downside, swept liquidity to the downside, and we still had our bull bias. So once we came up, we saw we didn't sweep any liquidity to the upside, and then we pulled back, created support. That's when I got in around 11.30 a.m. here on the screen candle, about 39.18, targeting new highs to the left. But I took profit just before, just in case that we rejected around the wicks to the left. So I ended up taking about 15 points here. And we did go ahead and make new highs, but I was out already before the new highs. So that was just me being a little bit more cautious. You know, I could have kept runners and let it run uh, and it would have ran a little more, but you know, that's okay. So green week overall, uh, had, a, had a better trading week this week than the previous week. Previous week was much more choppy. Um, he had a few days of chop this week. But um, the trade on Friday really made my entire week. Let me know how was your trading this week? You know, did you have any uh, slip ups? Did you follow your trading plan? Did you uh, slip up and, and kind of you know, throw risk management out the window, move your stops? Let me know in the comments below your frustrations. And um, we're gonna take a look back on the overall basis here and just take a look one more time before we close it off and see where we think the market's gonna go in the next two weeks. Zooming out to the weekly, we see on the S&P 500, we're clearly making lower highs still. So lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Uh, big re wick rejection here. So my whole thought process, ever since we had this re wick rejection, I just drew a fib from the high to the low. So all I did here was we drew a fib from the high to the low, see where we could likely retrace to, um, especially when we had this close. Uh, let me just go back to the daily. Once we had this close right here, so for me personally, once we had this close, that's when I had more confidence we would get a bigger retracement up into the 618, at least the 50%, but up into the up into the 618 possibly. And then we had exactly that. Reason why is because we had a close up above all the areas to the left through the chop area, and we just exhausted sellers to the downside. So once we started having more of that um, volume coming in, we thought we'd push up to the 618. I think uh, now still targeting what I think I said. So. Previous video, I said you would come up to about 4040, all the way up to about 4070. That's where I personally think the top could be before retracing and, and taking out uh, 3800. Then the question is, do we go below 3800 and make new lows at 34 to 3200? A lot of people are bearish thinking that, but I'm not going to trade that. Um, what I personally believe, like I said, is we trade up to this 4030 to 4070 area, reject, and actually make a new low. Uh, come under 3,800 sometime in February or March, but um, still trading to the upside this next coming week. So coming week, I think we're still bullish uh, and I'm not going to be thinking we're bearish until we get that um, daily break of market structure to the downside. So we'll just uh, keep an eye on it this week and then I'll give you an, an update again on the market next weekend and we'll see where we're at at the end of Friday, January 19th. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you in the next one.